While Julia says the flu shot is effective, one UNO student sees it differently. The UNO Mavericks lost to the South Dakota State Jackrabbits 76-58, ending what could have been a storybook postseason. Goalie masks are unique like the men who wear them. Alex Blankenberg is no exception to that rule. Tattoos are becoming increasingly popular around the United States. With that popularity comes demand. Sean Pierce, owner and artist at Skin Deep Tattoo Parlor in Omaha, says that not everyone can just decide to be a tattoo artist. Well, first of all, you have to be licensed both as an individual to do any type of body art like piercing or tattooing. Um, second, the facility that you have has to be licensed with the state. We all know real tattoos are permanent. Pierce says that the customer has to fill out release forms and provide ID. From there, it is on the customer to provide true and correct information. You know, on the paperwork, it states that they're not under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Um, you know, you can, you can smell if somebody's been drinking, in which case you have to turn them away. Um, you know, if somebody's acting erratically like they're on drugs or something, then, you know, it's, it's kind of a judgment call. Tattoo laws seem universal. Sean says there's one distinct difference between Iowa and Nebraska. In Iowa, uh, you can't tattoo minors, um, anybody under 18. In Nebraska, it's legal to do so. Pierce says that sanitation is a big point of emphasis for the state. Kylie Salter of Omaha knows that as much as the next person. We are actually talking because this one that I got, um, <laughs> it, uh, it got infected. So, I mean, we don't know necessarily why, but not going to make any speculations, but it got infected. For the Omaha News, I'm Alex Abler. The University of Nebraska at Omaha men's basketball team has begun practice in anticipation for the 2016-2017 season. The Mavericks were picked to finish fourth in the preseason poll for the Summit League Conference this year. UNO men's basketball head coach Darren Hansen says that he thinks the prediction is fair, but he hopes his players don't. If our guys don't think they should be picked that low and they think we're higher than that, then that's a good thing because it'll motivate them. Senior guard Trayon Hollins definitely thinks the Mavericks can finish higher than fourth. That motivates me. Um, I feel like we should be number one. Once again, we started as an under underdog, and we're looking forward to it. For other Mavericks, like senior Marcus Tyus, it doesn't really matter. I really don't even pay attention to it, honestly. Like, the years past, they had us preseason like last, but we always finished better than what we pro uh, projected. So we're going to go out and play hard every game and do what we can do. The Mavericks brought on three additional guards to the roster in the offseason. For veteran Marcus Tyus, that means just building up more team chemistry. Uh, right now we're just trying to get our chemistry right together and stuff right now. We kind of got some new guys coming in and uh, I'm coming back off of sitting out for a year. So it's just getting everything rebuilt back up. Hansen says that they'll be a much more dynamic shooting team this year, but will still have the ability to play down low. The Mavericks play two ranked opponents on the road in non-conference, and Hansen says that the non-conference is where he will learn the most about his team. Uh, our tennis have to be up in those games. They will expose us a little bit that maybe some other teams can't, so we can maybe um, find out some more of our weaknesses before in a conference play. Thanks, Thierry. Yesterday was the first day of Nebraskans to get out and cast their early votes. Voters are now able to vote in person, have the ballot mailed to them, or be picked up. It may be just under a month away from Election Day, but Douglas County Election Commissioner Brian Cruz said over 700 people had cast their vote on Tuesday. Early voting in Nebraska runs until November 7th, and the last day to register to vote is October 28th. So be sure and get out and do that. We're under four weeks until the 2016 election. The race for Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District between Republican candidate Don Bacon and his Democratic opponent Brad Ashford is heating up. Joining us now is, in, is incumbent Representative Brad Ashford. Congressman Ashford, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for doing this. The I studio appreciate looks it. looks great. So last night was your first debate mm -hmm. um, with uh, Don Bacon. Mm -hmm. How do you feel that your views differ from, uh, from Don's? Well, I think there are lots of issues that uh, we have some agreement on and others that we don't. Uh, I think the overriding issue of the campaign is how we're going to govern, uh, how we're going to break the impasse in D.C. and, and in, in the House and in the Senate and, and get things done in Washington. Um, I think the, at least what I think to be the, the, the most significant issue is who's best qualified to work across the aisle and work with Republicans and Democrats to 
to address any number of issues. I, I honestly think, and I've been doing this for a long time, 16 years in the legislature, and I can't remember a time when uh, governance was such an incredibly important issue. Uh, with the weirdness of the presidential, presidential race, uh, it puts a lot of, uh, I think, it underlines the importance of putting people in the Congress who are willing to buck their party, to go to solutions, because in, 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 on an, any number of issues, whether it's immigration, whether it's taxes, whether it's the war against ISIS, uh, those are all important issues and need to be discussed and debated, but I think the, the overriding question is how are you going to accomplish um, the goal of working across the aisle? Absolutely. So one of the things that came up last night in the debate was the, the fear of ISIS and uh, keeping Nebraska safe. Um, and one of the things that was, was brought up was that you want to um, arm our local law enforcement first. How do you plan to, to make that happen? No, no, no. I, I think what I was, the question that was asked of me was uh, how would you respond to an emergency?